Good morning, and welcome to the historic cathed Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We pray that you are all in good health. We ask that all present respect the instructions given by our ushers and the guidelines in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19, including using hand sanitizers, maintaining a distance of two meters, and wearing face masks when entering, leaving, or moving within the church. At the time of Holy Communion, we will give you further instructions. At the end of Mass, we ask that you exit through the main doors at the back of the church. Our presider today is Father Cecil Critch, and our gathering chant is number 475 in the Catholic Book of Worship, God Whose Glory Reigns Eternal, number 475. <laughs> Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Father. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries today, we ask the Lord to come into our hearts, to forgive us our sins. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care, O Lord, we pray. 
that they may see what must be done and gain strength to do what they have seen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the ear, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passion of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. This is not the result of works, so that no one may boast, For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But Jesus said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbiter over you? And Jesus said to the crowd, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then Jesus told them a parable, the land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink and be merry. Then God said to him, You fool, this very night your soul is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So, so it is with those who store up from them to treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the first reading from Ephesians, in, the, in another translation, there's a beautiful ending. Uh, it says here we are created uh, for Christ Jesus for good works. And in some translation, it talks about we are God's work of art created in Christ Jesus for good works. And that's a beautiful statement. And um, when we hear that expression, maybe some view of, uh, some of, not all of us would say that we are God's work of art. Sometimes we wouldn't say that. Uh, we are a gift from God, and yet that's what we are. Uh, as in our baptism, we are the gift from God. We are God's work of art, created in the image and likeness of God. So we are a gift. We are a gift to the world. We are a gift every day. We open that gift, that priceless gift of ourselves in service for others. And then salvation is a gift from God. So such a beautiful reading from Ephesians today. And in the Gospel reading today, you know, uh, there are many a family has been torn apart uh, when it comes to wills. <laughs> when you have things going, when, when uh, they can be very contentious affairs in families. Uh, there's many a family row over what land was left or buildings was left uh, when uh, someone dies and leaves, uh, leaves that in their will. So in the morning, this morning's gospel, such a family dispute is brought to Jesus' attention. A man comes up to Jesus and asks him to intervene in a family dispute about inheritance. And Jesus, very wisely, he stays out of it, declines to get involved. And so in the parable, Jesus portrays a person who is totally preoccupied with himself and completely self-serving. So the parable is about selfishness, really, and greed. This guy starts off very rich and he gets richer and his only concern is himself and his possessions. And the thought of sharing the surplus with the needy never enters his mind. When he died, suddenly he finds out how poor he really is in the sight of God. So Jesus calls on us in contrast to be rich in the sight of God first. Being rich in the sight of God means being generous with what God has given us, whether that be our earthly riches, our health, our time, our talents, our treasure, our gifts, as we share our love and mercy and goodness with other people. So Jesus says that a person's life is not made secure by what he owns. Possessions can only give us so much happiness and security, no more. The man, the parable we have just heard, made the mistake of thinking that possessions would provide him with total security. And Jesus declares that it is the person who is rich in the sight of God who will be secure in the ultimate and true sense of that word. We are rich in the sight of God when we live our lives generously, when we give of ourselves as Jesus did, dying to ourselves and rise to our selfishness and rising to generosity and hospitality, love, mercy, and compassion. So this morning's gospel reading calls us to pay attention to where our priorities in life lie, where our true security and lasting riches are to be found.
our prayers of intercession today. We pray for Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Peter, and all those who uh, courageously lead our church during these difficult days. We pray to the Lord. We pray for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life among our people, especially in our archdiocese. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all refugees and displaced families who are trying to find a safe home. We pray to the Lord. We pray for God's blessing and strength for all the sick recommended to our prayers, for Peggy Reed and Jim Foley and Kevin Dormady and all those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, and we remember today the intentions of Anne McDonald, Renee Stevenson, Nora Kiersey, as well as Sister Catherine Bellamy, and Brendan Bennett, whose funeral will be here tomorrow. For those, all those who have died, the peace of Christ, we pray to the Lord. And for your own intention today. We pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the grace and blessings you give us every day. And we make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. May your people's offering, O Lord, find favor with you, we pray, that it may restore them to holiness and obtain what they devoutly entreat through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest a resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we proclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly to his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. John the Baptist and all the saints, especially St. Paul of the Cross, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. with confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, I said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we share that peace of Christ now with one another.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy to stand during the Bible, but only say the word of my soul. An act of spiritual communion. A prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. To ensure the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe and respectful manner, we ask that you please follow these instructions. Instead of individually replying, Amen, upon receiving the host, there will be one general attestation of Amen before distribution begins. Please remain standing in your pew until invited forward by an usher. Ensure your mask is correctly worn before coming forward and maintain a two meter social distance in the communion line. As you approach the front of the line, sanitize your hands before receiving communion. Bow towards the host. In silence, receive the host in your hands. Step aside to consume the host. Return to your pew as directed by the ushers. Those unable to receive Holy Communion in the hand may come forward to receive a blessing. The body of Christ. Our communion hymn is number 6.1 in Celebrate in Song, Bread for the World, number 6.1. I 
Let us pray. Humbly we ask you, Almighty God, for be graciously pleased to grant that those you renew with great your sacraments may also serve with lives pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our prayer to Mary for help during the pandemic. O Mary, you always shine in our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, help the sick who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide so that as in Cain of Galilee, we may return to join to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us to the cross to the joy of the resurrection Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Uh, may Almighty God bless all of us today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Master is ended. Let us go now in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Our mission in Him is number 644 in the Catholic Book of Worship. O oh God, our help in ages past, number 644. Oh. 